The realities to which we are accustomed always seem so intensely compelling that they brook no doubt. But they also confound us, for we can't imagine how others fail to perceive what we perceive so vividly, why they describe things that sound like dreams. The history of medicine is steeped in such perplexities. We may find it natural, for instance, that exercise should stress the exertion of muscles, and that portraits of the person should merge into maps of musculature. In the West, these are venerable traditions. But in China, until recently, the idea of muscular action played no part in the understanding of the body. Chinese medicine, in fact, had no concept of muscle. How could they have missed something so obvious, we wonder? But then we can suppose doctors in China, for their part, no less bewildered by Western ignorance of acupuncture. After all, what kind of medicine neglects the flow of vital breath? What sort of healer seeks guidance instead from a man without skin, mutely gesturing in a garden? Like the blind men in the parable, doctors in East Asia and Europe approach the same reality, yet somehow grasp entirely separate truths. We need, then, to study the making of different perceptions of the real, and to understand how a particular style of knowing comes to seem like the only way to know. Our study will lead us through a marvelous labyrinth of surprising connections and metamorphoses. We shall contemplate the ties, for example, between the art of acupuncture and the art of landscape, and listen to the echoes of the ancient fascination with nosebleeds in modern debates about capital. We shall discover subterranean links between the birth and bile feedback, the obelisk in St. Peter's Square, the pathos of the vanities, and the hidden eloquence of tortoises. We shall ponder the startling coincidence of old Chinese images with our current technological visions. There is always more than meets the eye, latent in the words and pictures from faraway places and distant times are lively presences that can speak to us and teach us other ways of inhabiting the world that can guide us, as it were, around the elephant. But we must learn how to free them from the deadening fixity of habit. We must learn to perceive a reality in which nothing is fixed in stone.